how did you first get to know the Assad brothers? So, uh, do you have all night? I mean, <laughs> um, in brief, I lived on 72nd Street for many years above the guitar maker Thomas Humphrey. And when the Assads came to play their debut here on this very stage in 19, I think 78, possibly, yeah, 77, but I think 70, I think 78, um, or 79, 78, 79. Um, I'll never forget, and, and, and Tom was a dear friend, and, and I played his guitar, and his, his apartment was sort of the epicenter of guitar activity. You just, you couldn't believe how many guitarists would go through there to play his guitars, but also Tom's personality was bigger than life, and he, you know, it was the kind of place you just didn't blow in and blow out of. You know, you stayed and played his guitars, and he said, you've got to come down, you've got to hear these guys, the Assads, you just you never heard anything like this. And so sure enough, we, we would always sit in his sort of, when you come into his apartment, there's this sort of the, a sh small room that was sort of octangular, and it had a tremendously great sound. I almost thought it was like, and Tom knew that, it was like sort of a, for his guitars, it was a great selling. I mean, he's built killer guitars. But, so we had never, and sure enough, these two guys started playing, and it was a, you know those jaw-dropping moments where you just right, went here on the stage. No, 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 no. This is in Tob's apartment. Oh, in the apartment. So the apartment, and I, and I remember it just it was sort of you know I don't know if it was early evening or something, and just couldn't believe it. You know, it jaw-dropping. Like you'd never heard this kind of musicality, this kind of precision, this virtuosity, and all from memory. And I'd never seen any duo. Well, first of all, very few duos in that time were, were performing. You know, I mean, at least in New York City, and certainly not like this. And so. Th that was the beginning of our friendship, but, but totally connected to Tom Humphrey. Um, and and how, how it, is it that the commission for this piece came about? Well, it's sort of out of friendship. I mean, just, um, we were in Australia together at uh, doing a guitar festival, and I, and, and I really wanted Sergio to write a piece for me and my wife, Rie, and he said, well, sure, you know, I'll do that. And I said, well, I'll write you a piece. You don't have to play it. Um, but I'll write it for you, and, and if you like it, great. And so, so it's just that mutual thing, and then the why was, was great enough to, to put the commission through. So it really was a, a commission through the, the why has a, a commission series, so, you know, so I'm thrilled I, to. As Ben said, I'm, I'm also a musician, and, and uh, I find that these pieces that come from friendship are sometimes some of the best pieces. You know, you always think, oh, it's great if I have some giant commission for multi mega bucks from some big orchestra or something. But, you know, there's something about these pieces that come from this very personal connection that are just wonderful pieces. Well, I, I, hope, it's, <laughs> I hope it's a wonderful piece. Sir. Setting Herman. you guys yeah. up. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> you better like it. Um, <laughs> no, so, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, that raises the issue of... of you know, thinking of them when you're writing it, you know, and know, knowing I can, I, their sound is very much in my head, and, and having heard them play so many times um, that I just know what they sound like, and I, I think I know sort of Assad, what, what's going to be Assad friendly and what's not going to be, you know. Well, in fact, you're, you're sort of taking up the next question I had for you, which was, uh, what, what is it about their duo that, that um, you've particularly been excited about when you're writing this piece? What did you really so, go you know, for? It's really not even so much about the duo as about the fact that the, the, the bigger picture of the duo is that they're brothers, that they have played with everybody, you know, that they're such consummate musicians, you know, that they, and their, their sense of rhythm is, I mean, that, that was a big deal. Their sense of time is so great. Um, and so I knew that it had to be a rhythmic piece, you know, just had meaning you, you wouldn't, you know, you, you wouldn't want to, I mean, you could, it would be amazing, write a spatial piece for them, but it was all about, that, that was a big deal, was, was the fact that, one, they have this extraordinary relationship as brothers. I mean, I think you have to look at that if, you, if you're spending so much time with your brother, and, you know, you having a brother, and, you know, and, and me having, you know, brothers, it, whoa, a duo with your brother, and you live with them all the time. You, you just, you know, you, we used to feel like, you know, where you, you couldn't, the biblical chord was, was like, it was like, whoa, we're, we're, it's, it's, they were so close, and I think their sense of ensemble is so extraordinary, and I think that, that's an, the, the next thing, this ex unbelievable sense of, of knowing what the other's going to do before the other knows what they're going to do, you know what I mean? It's, it's just kind of, really? You know, you just, that, that's pretty extraordinary in, in, in duos. So, 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 so rhythm, the fact that th th this deep connection as brothers and this deep love for each other, I think, is brother. I think that their love for each other is uh, palpable, you know. 
And so are, these are these are elements that you really went for when you were writing, yeah. writing the piece. Yeah, I mean, meaning that you know, went for meaning, yeah, they're, that they're in the air. You know, you, you're really aware of them. You're not writing it. I think it's very different than writing for a non-brother duo. You know, which I've done. Just writing a duo piece. You know, I'm very different because, because again, and, and sounds. And I think I I was very aware that you know, um, to have a slow section because I really do, as, as much as they're known for great virtuosity and precision, I, I thought, oh, it'd be really cool to have a delicate cantabile section. I, that, was, that was definitely something that was going to be there before the piece started. And, and certainly color, you know, I love the sense of color, I mean, you know, but I didn't dictate anything like that, you know. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the title of this piece and, and what that refers to? What he said, well, Let's titles see. are so huge for me, I mean, it's got, the title's just got to be right. I can't live. And sometimes I get the title before the piece. But the, 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 the original title was going to be Gospel Guitars. Wait, it was going to be what? Gospel Guitars. Gospel Guitars, OK. And the title, what he said, re refers to a, sort of a lot of things. I mean, it's Tom Humphrey, because the piece is dedicated to Tom Humphrey. Um, and it refers somewhat to sort of who is he, you know, but it's sort of the he being Tom, but he could also be Tom was a Catholic, so it could be Christ, it could be his father, it could be Buddha, it could be, could be a lot of things, a lot of he's. Okay, Tom, Christ, father, Buddha, that's right. good. That's yeah. good. I was also thinking in terms of what he said, you have these two brothers. You, yes, yes. I, I don't know, maybe you didn't let him know, mm. but I mean, I can imagine what, what, he's, what he yeah, said. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but we were just laughing in the dressing room with, with Odair about that, yeah. Yes, yeah, like, well, you know, what did he say, because we're referring who, to Tom. What did Tom say? Well, and I said, well, Tom said a lot. We both know him, because they, they were, just so you know, they were really clever. Tom was family to them. And so uh, they were, you know, they've been playing Tom's guitars for, from the dawn, I mean, from the man that they hit. You know, I think the, the instant they came to America, they formed this tremendous, uh, uh, huge relationship, you know, t very in, uh, wonderful relationship with Tom. I say, I say huge, and it was just, and constantly playing his guitar. So what he said for the Assad is sort of really funny, you know, because we, because Tom was a talker. You couldn't shut Tom up. I mean, you think I'm a talker. I mean, like, and I, 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 I got to pardon myself. I had some coffee before this, and I think I'm just flipping out here. So, <laughs> so um, but anyway, what, what Tom, you know, Tom, I, I really talks. I talked. to tell you this, yeah. friend, you're, you're, you're the way you always are. Yeah, 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 so, <laughs> That's what's yeah. really scary. With or without, with or without coffee. You're always like this. <laughs> Anyway, I hope that answers your question. I mean, it's sort of um, so so re reference among other things to Tom, who who uh, definitely who was the friend, and I mean, what he said would that be um, a quotation or would that? Be I think well, the, the 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 piece is, I mean, to get into a little bit more of the music, make you know, the inspiration of the piece, for me really was I did want to write a gospel piece, and I love gospel music. Even um, when I say I love gospel music, this, they're, they're sort of not like I have 20, 30 gospel records, but the record Amazing Grace of Aretha Franklin is one of my favorite, you know, top, I don't know, top 10 records. And I used to love the, the old improvisations of Keith Jarrett, particularly when he would do this sort of quote gospel-like vamp. It just drove me crazy. So, and, and the piano player for Aretha Franklin, as much as, you know, Aretha, obviously, but, but there is something about the music, and I think most powerfully is the, the soulfulness of it, you know, just the, the inspiration of it, being so spiritually inspired, and the call and response, you know, so it's constant, and I think with the Assads, that was something with this piece that I really wanted. I wanted back and forth, dig it, dig it, and you'll hear a lot of that. It's just a constantly dialogue. So one will play, and then the other, yeah, like yeah, imitate all the time. And, 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 and there is a thing that I did do with, just for you to know, that I thought, well, two guitars, I'm definitely not going to tune them the same way. So what I really, I really like the interval of, of a major second. And the person that most pointed that interval out to me was John Adams. It just seemed in his orchestral works, there's always this, this, this major second or minor second that would come in with horns or something that just killed me, you know, in some of this harmonium or something, you know, this brass comes in and it's always a major second. Yeah. I was like, my God. So I thought with the guitars, how great it would be if, if we tuned, if one of them was tuned to D and G. So you have E, A, D, G. So you always have that possibility of a second. So I'm really, 
having not heard the piece, I mean, I'm really excited to, to hear how that sounds. Yes, we, we, should, we should let you guys know that, um, that you gave them the score. I gave them the score, yeah. And or sent them. You know, today, today is such a wacky thing. You know, the other day you would send it, you know, snail mail, and they'd get it and be physical. Now it's like you press a button that says, as you well know, send. And you go, I hope people like it. You know, it's, <laughs> it's just different somehow than putting it in the mail. You know, it's a jink. And then, and then so first Serge says, I have a different Sibelius program. I can't open it up. You know, it's like, oh, God. Yeah. All the things that yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to deal with in the modern yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but I sent them. And well, you'd also mentioned um, that, that knowing and respecting their great artistry, you gave them a little more freedom than you'd give uh, some players about articulations and, and uh, maybe yeah, speed. I, I think can't remember. what Lib is trying to say here is that I haven't heard a note. <laughs> I have no idea. I'll hear it for the first time with you all. When you hear it. I mean, I've me. heard it on my computer, which is a very different thing. You know, you have this sort of guitar-like sound, which is horrible for, for you guitar players in the audience. It even has the string shifting sound, which is about as irritating as it gets because they want it to be more realistic. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to hear. And they're laughing. We were dying of laughing because I said, you can pretty much play anything you want. I, I think I have an idea. There's a couple of sections I remember. So I don't, I don't know what's going to actually hear. But, but I do know that what some of the things I was telling you about, you know, structurally and what. And it doesn't, go ahead. And how did, how, how did you feel giving them the freedom to make some of these choices? Oh, yeah, that was, I, I think that's kind of great um, because I don't think you would tell them what to do somehow. <laughs> I think Sergio and I here, I think the music in this case is really pretty self-explanatory. And, and I thought about that long and hard, you know what I mean? I, you know, and I did put in some things, you know, but I felt, well, they'll, they're going to get this language pretty well. You know, it wasn't a language that I thought was such a far reach for them. Well, it also goes back to this issue of writing for your friends. It's almost like doing, uh, doing something, uh, I mean, the, the positive aspects of doing something in, in, in this very friendly kind of uh, way and not in a professional uh, way. Yeah. You know, feeling like you have to deli deliver them a score with every, everything, every little bit, you know. And I think what you just said is absolutely right. I mean, if I didn't know them so well, then I would put in dynamics, you know, I would. But I know them and I know I, 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 and that having been said, I also really have played so much music by other composers, as you know, um, and I like the creative process of working with other composers and, l and them l allowing me to do what I want, you know, mean, meaning, like, you know, I don't, maybe I don't want to play this pianissimo here, or, you know what I mean, look, to, to, depending on what the structure is, et cetera. So I think that that is a, a freedom that, as a performer, I know pe people want. And, and I know that I feel very confined a little bit when the piece is so dictated, you know. Yeah, it shows also, of course, your respect for their artistry. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. And, and that's a nice thing. I, I often feel as a, as a player that, that uh, when, when people are dictating every element that it's, um, yeah, not only constricting, but a little bit of a control freak and a little bit not respecting my own uh, input into the, into the, uh, the creation of the work. And exactly. As a, as, an, as a performer, it's an exciting thing to, to, to be a co-creator in a way. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Well, gospel guitar, um, are people going to hear something that sounds like Aretha Franklin? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, no, in fact, you might say, well, I don't hear anything gospel about it. But the fact is that as much as Aretha was involved, what really I stole from, there, there was a song by, there is a song by a guy named Lyle Lovett. Maybe some of you know he's a country, I don't know if he's a country singer, but great singer-songwriter. And um, he uh, wrote an extraordinary song called Church, which is about a preacher, and you know, being a son of a, sorry about that, Dan, um, son of a preacher man, um, Okay, this, wait, he's just mentioned this, but it, you guys, if you don't know, Ben is the son of a preacher. Right. So this, so what he said could be... Could be my father, Your yeah. father, okay. Absolutely. Good. So just yeah. to be I'm sorry I didn't say that, but that, <laughs> that was totally in the mix. And uh, so um, the, the uh, song, Lyle Lovett's song, Church, has, it's an extraordinary song about, again, about a preacher who goes on too long and... and but there were the piano parts, there were these little gospel da do -de -ba -bum, da -do -de -da -dum, and you'll hear that da -da -de -da -dum, ad nauseum. 
And I said, oh, that's great. And so I took that motive, and there was another one, um, another motive that's not coming to me now, but, but that I, I, I basically drove them in the ground. And so in that sense, it's got m a lot of minimalism to it. But the, the one thing that I enjoyed was the modulations, you know, that I just kept moving from key to key and, and using, and I do really love modulations. I think it's one of my things about playing Bach. You know, I, I get, I think it's just a big thrill going from one key to the next and, and feeling the, the motive in the new key and seeing how it holds up, you know, and how you get to the different key. I think there's one place where they go to F major and I, I remember thinking, oh, sounds great. You know, I and I think F on the guitar is a pretty good note. I was going to say that, that uh, on the guitar, I'm not a guitarist, but I would assume that, that these different tonalities would have very different sense of richness. Absolutely. Color. There's a whole thing in A major and that has a whole different feeling for me. And also color sometimes comes up, you know, just seeing red for, for, for A major and, you know, different colors, have, different keys for me have less, slightly different actual colors, yeah. schemes. But, but you do, so, so, so this song by Lyle Levitt, Lyle Levitt did have these two things that I ripped off, and I'm like, I'm having a trouble remembering the second one, but those two, and I used them, like I said, like crazy, and, and in a somewhat minimal fashion, you know. Uh, going back to Tom Humphrey. Yeah. Um, what he said, I mean, what, what are, I, and this is, you've said this piece is dedicated to him. Yeah. Could you just elaborate a little bit as to how important he was to the Assad brothers, to you? Yeah, I mean, Tom was a bigger than life figure. I mean, those of us that, knew him, knew, know, knew that. He was an extraordinarily inventive guitar maker, unbelievably passionate about what he did. And, and he could sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. I mean, this guy could get you to do whatever he wanted because he was so convincing. And, and, uh, and certainly he was a mentor for me when I first started and I played his guitars for my first you know, few records on his guitars. And, and, um, and then later I moved to another guitar, which was scandalous. Um, so, and, and to the Assads, again, it was sort of part, became part of their family, you know. Um, and, and so it was always a connection in terms of the Assads. It was always Odair and Sergio, you know. It, it was always related somewhat to Tom, you know, and somewhat, you know. So, so the, 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 he, he is so in the mix in terms of part my of relationship the, with them. The yeah. friendship, the family, yeah. their and brothers. And the, sound, and the sound of his instruments. I mean, you know, I haven't said anything about them, but, the, you know, the sound of his instruments, I would be able to tell constantly. Because I, you know, so, and I actually really wanted to, you know, thinking of doing another record on, on one of his, and just, just before he died, tragic, you know, tragically, I was on my, I was going to go visit him and sort of talk to him about another guitar or using one of his guitars for a particular record. Because I, I, as much as I love my guitar and I adore, the, I've been playing the same maker for, you know, 22 years. I, I really have a thing for Tom's guitars too, you know, as I can pick them up and go, oh, that's that sound, you know that I, I love. So I think what he said, you know, you could also, as, as Odair mentioned in the dressing room just now, you know, it's the, his voice is coming out through his guitars. So, so in other words, the, the legacy of Tom Humphrey will, will never die because his guitars are always, are always oh, there. Oh, so that's a beautiful thing. So, so the, the actual music of the, these guitars is, is what he said. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, so that's, so that's another aspect. They, they, no, the, the title's so loaded. I mean, it's like, you know, it could be anything. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's better than the piece. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Good title, terrible piece. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't think so. But yeah, they do talk uh, frequently about about how um, you know, when you find a piece of art that that it has a certain level of ambiguity, that where pe people can view it on many levels, that this this is something that adds to the richness and the depth. And yeah. it sounds like certainly this piece is, is like that. Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't like I said I don't think I. I I don't know if it's going to have a, you know, if I hadn't said that thing about gospel music, I don't know if you'll ever get it. But, you know, but for me it does, because there's, there's just certain moves, like that motive. And mm -hmm. well, I was curious, uh, we, we talked a little bit about the, the piece uh, before, before we got together tonight, and I'd, I'd heard also about this gospel uh, music uh, aspect of it. Now, I happen to know, uh, because we've known each other a long time, and we're friends, that, uh, that Ben is, is a follower of Buddhism, very serious right. practitioner. Um, so I was a little surprised that you, you, you jumped uh, from, from the jumped east back to, back to the west <laughs> and, and right. uh, started, started using these you know, Christian Im images and, and uh, you know, knowing some of Ben's other pieces have uh, very sort of, um, st kind of very strong Buddhist oriented titles, one being Give, another, um, what was the one that I was thinking about, uh, Be Kind All the Time? Right, right. Um, 
So this is, this is a, a departure for you. Yeah, well, because I think when you come from, you know, Judeo-Christian background, it's pretty hard to shake. And, and I never had a problem with Christianity per se. You know, like, it, you know, even, you know, in other words, I didn't have a, I love my father. He was, like, he was an amazing sort of preacher, amazingly powerful public speaker, like really, really good. Um, and, you know, wrote a book called It's Better to Believe. W what's that about, you know? <laughs> so, uh, Speaking of unambiguous yeah, yeah, yeah. titles. Yeah. Um, no, but, he, but the groovy thing about my dad was that he wasn't, he never pushed it on anybody. You know, it's like he didn't wear a collar. I mean, he was mostly an educator. He didn't, he didn't really have a parish. He, he was the head of the Worcester School in Danbury, Connecticut for 35 years, and that was kind of his parish, and that was kind of, you know, and yeah, and I had to go to church, you know, regularly, and I was the typical, you know, laughing in the pew and putting my head down and everything to me was funnier than the thing before, and then he would give me the evil eye, you know, from the pulpit. I mean, it was brutal. I mean, it was like, but, but you know, and he, and he loved to sing, you know, so, you know, so I have nothing but really, like, you could always hear him singing the, the loudest, you know, especially when they go down, when, they, mm -hmm. when the gig's over. And I did a couple of gigs with him, and we used to, he used to laugh. And, you know, we did, I played Good Friday services, for, you know, which were always a very light kind of service. Oh, oh yeah, say. yeah. <laughs> So, no, I remember playing Bach, um, yeah, the ultimate Good Friday was Bach Sarabon from the, from the third, well, for us, the third lute suite or the fifth cello suite. It's really, to me, very extraordinary. You know, anybody would tell you, that's just an extraordinary Sarabon, it's a, you know, in terms of its kind of depth and starkness. And so that's a, that, I remember doing that Good Friday. So, you know, going, so it's, for me, it feels really good to, to sort of go back and, yeah, to have that sort of outlook, you know, that, and, and Tom being a Catholic, it, it felt like really right, because I, I knew from day one that, that I was, this is going to be dedicated to Tom, that was, that was totally decided before a note was, like, if I was going to write for the Assads, it would be dedicated to Tom. Well, it, uh, knowing your other pieces, and I'm not sure how many people in the audience will know your, your work, but um, uh, the pieces not only have these Buddhistic titles, but there's something in the very fabric of them that, that strikes me as being sort of Buddhist-like. I mean, it, it's, they tend to be very um, uh, positive, affirmative. Um, there's a sort, a sort of um, a sweetness to them. I mean, you know, it's no... Oh, well, thanks. No, oh, yeah, it's beautiful. But, but it is beautiful. It embraces beauty. It's not really uh, the kind of music that's trying to be... Uh, sort of seriously making a deep impact on, you know, it's, it's sort of more something that's very affirmative and very, yeah, life affirming. Wow. Um, uh, will, will this piece that's more coming from a uh, Christian viewpoint uh, be, be sounding like it's a Ben Verde piece? It's a real downer. Will it, no, will, it be a, <laughs> will it have that same kind of quality or do you think, uh, I think it's pretty it? happy, yeah. It's pretty mm -hmm. upbeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember I, mean, I just remember really enjoying, well, I always enjoy writing, but I mean, I really had fun. This one just pop, popped out, you know. It's just, yeah, I think, I think, it's, I think it's pretty upbeat. It's def definitely positive. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like I say, I haven't heard it, so. <laughs> it is, I've heard it, it on the mind, computer. It I've heard mind, it it's upbeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it is, yeah. It's a celebration, if anything, of, of Tom and the relationship with Isads and you know, it's much more celebratory than anything else. Um, as part of the Oral History of American Music Project at Yale, um, I, I interview many composers, and we have things that we always like to ask composers. So I wanted to ask you a few, a few of those questions, if you'll allow me to. Um, Go nuts. When you, when you, actually, what's the process of writing a piece? What, what do you do? Do you, do you sit, especially with a guitar piece, you must have so much guitar music in, in your hands. And I am in a your noodler. Mind. I am a noodler. I love to noodle. And usually, in fact, I talk about this with, with a friend of mine, great guitar composer, uh, Roland Deans. And we both agree that we, we get great ideas before the concert. You know, it's like, you, you know, it's freaked about my memory of the Chaconne or whatever it is I'm playing. But at the same time, I'm, just, I'm going, oh, a cool thing, you know. So it often starts with noodles, and and but in this case not. So so it's not, you know what I mean? It's not. In this case, I really found 
because I was so determined to write a gospel piece, you know, and, and it didn't come easy at first because I, I was messing around with progressions and a, and a former student of mine were giving me all these gospel, typical gospel progressions, you know, di you know d different chord progressions that are t t typical in that, you know, turnaround phrases. And the problem is that on the piano, they sounded so great to me, on the guitar, they just didn't sound right. And I was like, oh, this is frustrating me beyond belief. You know, I couldn't get that, uh, I think that they can get on the piano. I'm sure, because gospel, you've got the like Hammond organ, oh. and, you know, that kind of like really yeah, the weighty, guitar's not the thing. weighty Yeah, and it's all about the voice. It's really about the voice. But I, I like the accompaniment so much. So that's when this process for this piece was a little different because the, it, it was that motive. Once I found that ripped off the motive from the piano player in church, I was like, oh, I'm home free. Because it, it sounded pretty good. The dee -do -dee -do -dum. I said, okay, that's it. I got, the I got it. And, and then... Uh, and then I started with an introduction, because uh, I knew, I told you that, I knew I wanted something slow for them, something that really made them play cantabile and beautiful, and then, and I had 14 measures written, and my friend John Dearman, who, great, from the L LAGQ, was, was spending, and I said, hey, and, and he knows, they, they love, they're like great buddies. So I was very in touch with, you know, John, in, in a way of like, hey, I'm writing for the Sergio, and over that year, I said, oh, God, you, that's heavy. You know, I said, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I know it's heavy. And, uh, okay, so, read this with me. So we both read it, the 14 measures. And then I said to him, I don't know, man, I, I, think, I, I think I need an introduction. I don't think I can start with the slow section. Because sometimes I get a little bugged with pieces that are slow and then get fast. I've done, I've, I've done it too many times. And I said, no, no, no. It's, it's kind of a classic form. Yeah, yeah, it's like, Almost, ah. Yeah, so, so, so I said, okay, I'm going to start with a killer, you know, intro that's going to be really exciting. But, but I didn't, but that was after reading with John. See, so so did you write it actually on the so guitar? So I do, I tend to, in terms time? of your process, I mean, I use that motive, uh, and then I tend to write on the guitar, and I tend to have to, I'm pretty manic in the beginning about hearing, you know, hearing everything, you know. I think pretty much all the way. I have to know, and I think some of it is just indulgent. I just like it, you know. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I always say I don't think my music is any good, but I like it. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't write something I didn't think was, was you know, didn't, it's got to give me some sort of, feeling of joy and it's like yeah that wow yeah I like that you know so so you hear it because you're playing it or do you yeah hear I hear it because I'm playing it about and then playing once the it's the balls rolling then the best ideas come often away from the guitar and usually when I'm going to the store walk into the yeah, store or doing the dishes those two things Apple yeah, 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 because like you leave it, you leave it, and you, you, and then and it's always the same, I, it's always the same, I leave, I go down the elevator, I'm on the, oh, that's what I should do. Because you, it's, then you're, you're not imprisoned by the, the computer or the guitar, or you're, and there's something about walking that's really built for thinking about yeah, music. Yeah, because I would think the tools, and especially for you, with so much guitar music in your fingers, in your mind, to, to try to do something fresh, um, I can imagine, to get away from the guitar. Would yeah, I think, I think being trapped by improvising, you know, I, I generally write from improvisation, but this, this was a little different. But still, you know, still I'm, I'm noodling, and I found, I, yeah, I did, and I found a, oh, I remember, the piece is coming back now, if, if they played that, those parts. If, I don't know if they, 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 they might have, Sergio might just write it himself, which would probably be better, but <laughs> can I say? So, but, but yeah, I remember hitting a couple of, moments that I loved, you know, sort of. And then do you stand back, uh, ha having heard it on the computer, and do you still uh, adjust things, or do or Yeah, oh, totally, yeah, 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 take the measures out, edit this, this is not good. I mean, I remember writing for David Russell. The other thing that happens when you write, I remember writing this piece for David Russell, which he played here last year, and um, thinking I was a genius, you know, I went home to my wife, go like, oh, you know, I just can't, you know, somebody slapped me, I can't stand myself. And... I was so impressed with myself, I couldn't stand it. And, and, I, and I, you know, I wanted to be waited on, and yeah, like over here, you know? And then the next morning, I, I went back to my studio, like, okay, like, bring it on. Let's, <laughs> let's look at what I wrote, because this is going to be it. It was horrible. I mean, it's like, I said, this can't be, and I was like, sweat, this just can't be. Yesterday it was so great, and today it's really, really bad. Like, not bad, like bad. Like, really, like, where, what, you were on drugs? I mean, what, what were you doing? <laughs> Unbelievable. So I just, I threw out so much of that. So you yeah. do, you have to know when you're fooling yourself, you know. And that's not apparent on the moment, because you, you know, at least me, I can get way into, like, this is killing. 
and it's just not it's just just bad it's creative like, process is an interesting yeah thing. and yeah. you know and david and then david you know but 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 sergio so this we didn't have any dialogue sergio just said very exciting we are we are learning it it was like okay great but but with other so so he says and then sergio said well i said uh, so am i gonna we're gonna hear it before i don't you know, I'm imitating him, but he, you know, no, you are not going <laughs> to. I would well, rather not you, you, you hear it, then, then we can talk later. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm cool with that. It's, it's very exciting. Right. John Williams was very different. John Williams was like, but, but John did everything over the phone. So John would say, what do you think of this? I was like, so, yeah. But I still, that was a duo too, and I never heard that, and that was recorded. That was pretty much, now it's recorded, this is it. You know what say. So it's not it's as, a, as a composer, you throw through it's caution. It's very good to just, to, yeah, just yeah, let, let, let it go. go. Let it go. I have to say. Well, with that said, we should let you guys go because we have we've come it's to the so end of our time fun. here. Well, thank you, Liv. Thank you. Thank, thank you, so you guys much. for listening thank to us. You. Yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs>